watching Smurf? Who oh, played Smurf? Oh, now it's a video game. Gargamel captured the Smurf bag. And that's a Smurf. He's got a rap viewer. Smurf under him. Smurf under him? That's Smurf talk, Dad. Smurf over him. Smurf it all. Play Smurf on your ColecoVision, Atari VCS, or Intellivision video game system. Dad, maybe Smurf is too exciting for you. Give all the praise you want to the home port of Donkey Kong. For my money, nothing truly showed off the capabilities of the ColecoVision more than Smurf Rescue in Gargamel's Castle. Smurf was a bit of an odd duck game when it was released in 1982 as it was one of the few Coleco published titles at the time not based on an arcade port. Even when their box art consisted of nothing more than pictures of arcade cabinets, Smurf's packaging was a bit more detailed, even if it did look like a color forms playset with the various Smurfs placed randomly around the backdrop. The plot of Smurf Rescue in Gargamel's castle is quite simple. You have to guide your nameless Smurf to rescue Smurfette, who has been kidnapped by the evil wizard Gargamel. By the way, despite the full title, Gargamel makes no appearance in this game, nor does his cat Azriel. You begin your adventure in Smurf Village and have to work your way through different backdrops. An open field, a cave, the castle, jumping over obstacles such as gates, ledges, and stalagmites successfully. If your timing is off or you don't clear the obstacle, your smurf falls comically backwards and you have to attempt the screen again. The difficulty of the jump is marked by the scorecard resting towards the right of the obstacle. 200 points for those you can clear with a single jump and 300 for those with smaller windows of success and or may require a double jump. For a title that depends highly on jumping, this game handles the mechanic in an unusual and somewhat infuriating way. Instead of using either of the side buttons, you have to use an up motion on the stick to launch yourself into the air. Pushing up while you're in motion will perform a short jump while pressing straight up twice while standing still will give you more height and distance. And yes, it's quite easy to do one when you meant to do the other. But once you get the hang of this control quirk, the game is pretty much a cakewalk. At least this is the case on skill level 1 difficulty. Choosing two or above will introduce some creatures into the game that add a new level of challenge. Hawks swoop in from above and will knock you over. Bats also begin to inhabit the cave portions of the game, as do spiders there in the castle backdrops, both of which must be avoided. Furthermore, your energy meter depletes faster in higher levels, giving you less time to dawdle and plan out your jumps. Make it through the gauntlet of natural hazards and you'll come across the room in which Smurfette's being held. The skull is your way up to the table. Do a large jump on top of it and then to the table and enjoy the nice little reconciliation tune. Or if you're tired of rescuing her, exit quickly to the left and trigger the redraw glitch that makes it appear as if Smurfette is standing around topless. As I mentioned at the top of the episode, Smurf Rescue in Gargamel's Castle was quite the showpiece for what Coleco's then new hardware was capable of. The graphics and sprites were colorful with fluid animation, almost truly resembling its cartoon namesake, if you were standing far away enough, squinting ever so slightly. The background music is also quite impressive, particularly for a console of this time period, consisting of Joseph Brackett's Simple Gifts and the first movement of Beethoven's Pastoral as rendered on the console's Texas Instruments sound hardware. The gameplay may leave some people wanting more. New players may experience a bit of frustration early on with the jumping routines, but once mastered, there's little left to try and accomplish. The satisfaction of getting to the end of the dozen or so screens wears thin after a while, with minimal increases in challenge and no new elements or backgrounds added on subsequent trips. Ah, eh, but it's still a good game to have in any self-respecting ColecoVision library. You won't play it for hours, which is probably true of many games around this time period, but its whimsy is enough for a quick game every now and again. In 2014, a user by the name of Frizzola created a browser-based version of Smurf Rescue. Entitled Day of the Purple Smurf, this homebrew version bases itself around the Purple Smurfs episode of the cartoon. You know, the one where they pinch each other while saying GNAP. There's only one type of jump here, the high one, which will mess up your timing. Also, whereas the original game randomly arranged the obstacles every time you played, here it is prearranged, and the jumps required to beat it are quite specific, with little room for error. On the plus side, familiar characters were added, including Papa Smurf and an end boss by way of Gargamel. It's quite clever and worth a try, even though it's a bit too unforgiving. My name is Dave, and this was Game Break. Please remember to Smurf, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.
For my money, nothing. It's okay. Okay, one more time.